everybody, I'm Tom Vassell and welcome to Kickstarter Look Back. This is where I take a look at different projects that I backed on Kickstarter for the Dice Tower Library or for Dice, you know, maybe for the Dice Tower Library. And we just take a look and see where those projects are now, what I think about them, and so on and so forth. We're going to be taking a look at 12 different projects today. So let's get started here. And I think our first project that we're going to be taking a look at here is one that just came out this summer and is a pretty big one, and that is Wonderland's War. So Wonderland's War here, this is from Druid City Games. Wonderland's War um, is, Druid City Games tends to make their games big and grandiose, even if they aren't a big and grandiose game. But this one definitely is that. It is a bit area control. There's a, some bag pulling in it, and you know what? I really did end up liking this one. Now, this one has various kind of upgrades and stuff. The biggest upgrade, I think, the actual chips themselves, nice little tiny poker chips, to me feels absolutely necessary. The standees to miniatures, not as big of a deal, but because the standees are, I mean, if you get your miniatures painted, it works. Otherwise, you're probably better off with the standees. Having these little meeples, as opposed to the little monster shapes. Um, I think I like the monster shapes better, but you know, as we look here, it's just, it's a beautiful deluxe version of the game with these bags and, ah, oh, it's fantastic. But the game itself is also really well done. So this one I'm very happy to have. Um, yeah, and I wouldn't be surprised if we see some expansion to this announced soon. Maybe there has been one by now. I know that they're teasing the idea that some news for this game's coming or a standalone sequel, who knows? Marvel United. Well, come on now, you know Marvel United. This was the original Marvel United here, made $2.8 million. And we know it was successful because they got this game in the backers' hands before the next X-Men United came out and that one did even better. Now, X-Men United here, or I'm sorry, Marvel United, a very simple chibi style game with tons of stretch goals. I really love this game. It has become one of my favorite games because it's a simple plug and play cooperative. You pick some heroes, you pick a villain, put them together, and it works really well. The miniatures look really good painted, it's easy to play, has a Marvel feel to it, and I think that the X-Men one is probably a little bit more superior because it has I think they differentiated the heroes a little bit more, but some of my favorite villains are still from this original one, and it's just so much fun to play. There's so much stuff in this one that they did add it to the next Kickstarter that you could back it again. Will there be a third Kickstarter? Ah, Simon's being a little mum on that, so I'm not sure. But this one, I'm very happy with. Boomerang is coming back. I get it, right? Uh, so Boomerang's a little... Um, it is a draft and write style game, and I really did enjoy it. Here they had three versions of it, which I gotta be honest, completely unnecessary. I thought it'd be a cool thing, and I think I had Boomerang in the Dice Tower Library because I think Boomerang's a very, very good draft and write game. I don't need all three of them though. I would just pick the country that you want it. And then they, they were trying to make it so you might even want to put them together, but the original game, which I believe was in Australia, worked really well. And now there's a U.S. version and everything else in here. This is fine. It just, I don't think you need it this much stuff. They definitely gave you, uh, this is my review of the original one, which was very cute and light. But it's a pretty neat game. Definitely worth checking out. Aeons and Outcasts. Um, this is um, an expansion for Aeons and. There you go. Um... I'm at this point, I am out of the Aeon's End ball game. Uh, Chris and Wendy Yee play this, so I know that they got this, and I know they like Aeon's End. I like Aeon's End fine. Um, I'm, it's, it's kind of dying on me a little bit. I, I find it to be a little bit too thinky. Sometimes I just want to play a deck builder kind of casually and for fun. I like a lot of deck builders, but hey, they did deliver on this one, and man, another one that just does really well. There's a lot of big Kickstarters that uh, came out around this time. All right, here's a Kickstarter I was not as big of as big into. This one made eighty-seven thousand dollars. Gorinto. Now this is from Grand Gamers Guild, who makes really good stuff. And you know what? The components for this are pretty good. You see these little tokens here. They don't look as neat as these ones that are spinning. I wish they looked that cool. Um, but the idea here, you're moving these around, 
trying to accomplish different goals, collecting pieces, and unfortunately the game gets less interesting as it moves along. I didn't find this one to be very fun at all. I also found that pretty much nobody played it when we put in Dice Tower Library. Um, this company has a lot of goodwill. This got a lot of good buzz at the beginning here, but this is one I don't think people will be talking about in a few years if they're talking about it now. My next game here, I think, is the only game on this list that I did not receive yet. I don't think I've gotten Storm Sender because I just went and looked at it and they said, hey, it's delayed again. This one made 816000 a solo cooperative RPG game with, well, miniatures, right? This is one of those ones where they put the miniatures like, yeah, look how big that book is. There's a lot of special abilities. I hope this one plays well. I think that the art and the miniature combos, those look pretty cool. Um, although, once again, I still don't understand why the art miniatures are different. That's mind-boggling to me why they do that. Do they think people think that's cool? I don't. Anyhow, this looks really cool. This looks like a fun adventure-style game. I hope it's not awfully complex here, but there's 100 miniatures, they said, 1,100 cards, a 300-page campaign book. Less excited about that. I would love to have some of these games you just went in and pulled out the miniatures and played. I don't need a 300 campaign page campaign book for everything, but it looks neat. They unlocked a ton. I mean, look, ah, that's a lot of stretch goals. So we'll have to wait and see what it's like when it comes in, but I'm definitely looking forward to seeing this one. I hope it's good. Merlin Deluxe Big Box. So Queen makes a big box for pretty much all their games at this point. This one I like. I like Merlin, and I'm not going to play with everything in Merlin, especially at the same time. But I think the base game in Merlin is one of Stefan Feld's best games. I like the huge rondelle it is, and I thought I played the first expansion for it, and I really enjoyed that. And this adds several expansions, including the Queenies, which are their version of mini expansions, and it all fits very nicely into the box. So this one's cool. Eh, I'd say $100 seems like it was worth it. Oh boy, the Matchbox Collection. So this is from, um, it says Gonzalo, Gonzalo, but this was from what, Thunder, Thunder Glyph Games? Man, this is a huge disappointment. Now I look at this and I say, wow, 60 euros for this seems like a pretty good deal. There are five small card games, and then there was like a whole stretch box of an upgraded piece for each game somehow. They're beautiful. They do a fantastic job on how pretty these games look. The rules are horrendous. Some of the worst rule books in games ever. And I don't think the games themselves are particularly good. Golems is okay. Rebus is not particularly good. Io, some people say it's good. I don't think so. 15 days, not so good. And then what was the one I missed here? This food one. Oh, Space Lunch. That one was terrible. Comes in his little cool box, came with playmats for the card games. Man, I really wanted to like this, and I did not. And um, as I looked around, many other people agreed, although the biggest egregious sin of this one was just the really bad rules. Gladius, an award-winning board game for two to five players. Here's the thing on this one. I like this one. This is a cute little game. That is probably going to be forgotten like many other games, but you have a gladiator that there are a couple gladiators and you're basically betting on how well they'll fight and then you play cards to affect that. The artwork is fun. The gameplay is simple. We There's these different gladiators fighting in different arenas. We found it to be very enjoyable. Um, nice little game. I'm glad I got it. Chronicles of Crime, the Millennial series. Now, this was the gift that kept on giving because you got these pretty quickly, but they didn't change the app for them for a while. So first we played Chronicles of Crime 1400, then 1900, then 2400. There was a good chunk of time in between. I didn't mind that because it was like, oh, I got another game. I already have the pieces. Yay. The one thing I have not played is I know they made some scenarios that tied these all together. I have those. I haven't played them because they just came out, I guess, a month or so ago. So looking forward to that. 1400 was good. 1900 was, I think I like 1400 better than 1900. They're both good. But 2400, oh my. Man, this one's so good. From avatars to ways that you upgrade yourself to give you special abilities in this game to having, to you're like j jacking into the internet. Man, it's just, oh, this was my favorite of 
anything for um, Chronicles of Crime. This was a really, really good deal. Mint Control. So this was, I think, the fourth game for Poketo. And they had, the, they had the Mint Delivery, Mint Co-op, and then the original one, which was Mint Works. This one is the fourth in that series, Mint Control. And unfortunately, it is easily the worst of all of them. They have these little games with these mint tokens, and this one was an area control game, except in this one, you could win area control with one token. Everything was really tight. It didn't feel like there was any real decision making, and this one should have gone back to the drawing board. It just was not particularly very good. And then finally, we have Painted Meeples for Raiders, Architects, Viscounts, and Paladins. So this is from Meeple Source, and they make stuff for everything. So. I don't think I got all of this. Or, no, I did get all of it. Never mind. I got the pieces for all these games. I put them in. Some people like these painted meeples from Meeple Source. I am one of those people. I like them all a lot. And you can see these are the original meeples. They upgraded them, made them look cooler. And then, of course, they show you all their other stuff that they do because they have upgrades for many, many, many games. These fish for oceans are some of my favorite. So. Yeah, I mean, I'm glad I got these pieces, but I'll say the same thing I always say. Super expensive. Anyway, so back them if you want, but realize you're paying about a dollar per meeple. Anyway, folks, that's the things I look back at. Some really good stuff there and then some stuff that didn't pan out so well. But I got all those projects except one, so there's that. Anyway, that's Kickstarter Look Back for today, folks. Until next time, I'm Tom Vassell, and you've been watching The Dice Tower.